Today's read aloud is It Takes a Village by Jane Cohen Fletcher. It Takes a Village, written and illustrated by Jane Cohen Fletcher. The sun was just beginning to climb into the sky, but the villagers had been up for hours. It was market day. Yummy, Mama said. You must take care of your little brother today while we're at the market. I will be too busy selling our mangoes. Come on, Koku, Yemi said. I will watch you today all by myself. All by yourself? Mama asked and smiled at what Yemi had said. Mama knew better. Mama picked up their mangoes. Yemi picked up Koku. She felt very grown up as she walked out of the family compound beside Mama. They joined the stream of people walking into the village. People came from all around to sell their goods and buy whatever they needed. Market day was also a time for visiting. The greeting started the moment they stepped on the paths to town. Hello, how are you? How is your family? Yemi helped Mama set out their mangoes. One of the other fruit vendors said, Yemi is a big girl now. She is a lot of help to you. Yes, said Mama. She's going to watch Koku for me today. All by myself, Yemi added. All by yourself? Gege, the woman marveled. They smiled and nodded, but they knew better too. When the mangoes were all in neat piles, Yemi asked if she and Koku could take a look around the market. Mama said, Yes, but don't be gone too long. Yemi had not walked very far off, very far, when Koku became restless. He must be hungry, she said. She set him down for just one minute so she could buy some peanuts, and Koku wandered off. Choo! Yemi cried when she turned around and discovered Koku was gone. She put the peanuts in her pocket, and she hurried off to find him. Where could he have gone? She said. As Yemi searched for him, she began to worry. Koku must be hungry, but he was not. Koku must be thirsty, but he was not. Koku must be frightened, but he was not. Koku must be hot, but he was not. Koku must be tired, but he was not. Finally, after searching for him everywhere, Yemi stopped and cried aloud, Koku must be lost, but he was not. Just across the path where Yemi stood, Koku was waking up. Is this your Koku? The mat vendor asked. Yes, exclaimed Yemi as she scooped up her brother. Thank you so much for taking care of him, Yemi said to the mat vendor. Oh, he chuckled. I was not the only one. He pointed to where Koku had come from. Yemi thanked him again and headed off in that direction. He said thank you again, and again, and again, and again. We've been gone a long time, Koku, Yemi said. Mama must be worried, but she was not. Mama knew better. 
as my mama told me and her mama told her, I will tell you, you weren't alone today, Yemi. We don't raise our children by ourselves. It takes a village to raise a child. The market. Africa has its, Africa has its share of market, supermarkets and shopping centers, but in rural villages in Benin and many other African countries, the traditional open air market is the only market that serves the community as it has for hundreds of years. The villagers are the buyers and the sellers. Market days occur on regular schedule all around the year. The produce and other food staples available vary according to growing season and region. The market is also the source for fabric, clothes, cooking utensils, farm tools, fishing equipment, livestock, handcraft items like baskets and pottery, and as well as such imported items as canned milk, canned fish, batteries, lanterns, soaps, plastic dishes, enamel pots, pens, and school notebooks. It's an open air shopping mall where you're likely to find just about anything you need. Market day is also a social occasion with food vendors selling hot meals snacks and beverages. It's an opportunity to visit with relatives and friends. All of the items depicted in this book, such as pottery, fabrics, baskets, decorated calabashes, and so on, are not representative of a specific region, um, but are typically found in markets throughout Benin. It takes a village to raise a child an African proverb.